Short Questions, Short Answers by Torah Teacher Ariel and eBible. And as I'm fond of mentioning, they bring the questions and I bring the answers, and sometimes we actually make sense of one another. Okay, here's our question on the table for tonight. If Hashem is not cleansing unclean animals in Acts chapter 10, then what is he cleansing? How are we to understand the vision that we read about in this particular part of our Bible? All right, let's unpack it. I personally believe that Kifa's interpretation of his own vision is the best and most important interpretation that's offered, namely this. Are you ready? Here it is. What Hashem has designated as kosher that is fit for consumption and treif, not fit for consumption, in the Torah of Moshe concerning food still remains clean, that is to whore, and unclean, that is to may, respectively. Understand what I mean? So, although the sheet contained all manner of animals, like we read about, I believe what Hashem is trying to get Kifa to understand is that the animals represent all manner of peoples, not the literal animals themselves. You understand what I mean by that? Let's talk about that in tonight's study. This interpretation is in accord with the unchangeable nature of Hashem. To be sure, is this not how Kifa interprets the vision himself in verses 28, 34, and 35? Let's, cur- let's turn in and actually read those particular verses, all right? Verse 28 says, He said to them, You are well aware that for a man who is a Jew to have close association with someone who belongs to another people or to come and visit him is something that just isn't done. But God has shown me not to call any person common or unclean. So this is Peter's first response to Cornelius. Then Kiva addressed them, I now understand that God does not play favorites. Verse 35 says, But that whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him, to God, that is, no matter what people he belongs to. So notice, Peter explains his understanding of the vision and what it truly means to him and to Cornelius and to all of us who are going to be reading this passage later on. So what are our conclusions for this very short video study tonight? Well, let's name them, all right? In the end, considering how the written word of God describes forbidden and permissible foods, and considering the core nature of the gospel as revealed to Abraham, the father of those faithful Jews and Gentiles who are in Messiah, read Romans chapter 4, as well as Galatians chapter 3, to catch the gist of what I'm explaining here, the message of the Acts and Vision is actually crystal clear. Ready for it? Here it is. Certain forbidden animals of Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 are declaratively unclean. The Greek would be akathartos, with the corresponding Hebrew being tame of akathartos, right? Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 still stand. And thus should not be eaten, these particular animals, they shouldn't be eaten by covenant members. Why? Because Hashem says not to eat them. He declares them off limits to Israel. The Torah never hints at a time when such a declaration would be reversed by divine decree or such, such as the traditional understanding of the Acts 10 vision like we hear about in traditional Christianity today. However, those loyal to covenant faithfulness need not worry because the vision was never about food in the first place. It was about people. Understand what I mean? All right. I hope that helps us understand what we're reading. Those Gentiles from the nations that God was bringing into remnant Israel via faith in Yeshua are not intrinsically and thus irredeemably unclean, which would be the Greek akathartos again, like the first century Judaisms were professing. That was the big challenge to them uh, that this vision was being presented. Jews should not avoid them merely because they are Gentiles by birth and remain as Gentiles even after coming to faith in Messiah. That's why Peter needed to be sent this vision to to understand how God was cleansing the Gentiles in Messiah. They, these Gentiles, like all men, have been created in God's image. And as I mentioned, as such, they should be viewed as defiled, that is, koinos, by the stain of sin, yet in need of cleansing, katharizo, by the blood of Yeshua. Check out my podcasts, which are available on iTunes. You can search for me in the store under the search term Ariel Hanavi. But if you prefer to watch your theology, check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell for notifications. New content is added weekly or even daily.